Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, 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 depending on where you are on the planet, and welcome to today's Bull vs. Bear webinar on Wednesday, 11th of May, with Steve Miley on the call for trade day. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, good to be back. Uh, not been on for a few days in here since the back end of last week. I've been, we had some technology problems and I've also been uh, not feeling too well. So um, I know James has been covering me uh, in a grand way. So thank you, James. Um, I am going to run through our usual kind of stuff in here today. Just want to wind back to the weekly stuff that I put up, you know, beginning of uh, well, actually on Sunday. Um, and just, you know, point out the fact that, you know, that, that, you know, even back then we were talking about, you know, today being an important day. We've got three sets of CPI data, all eyes on that really. It's, it's the big focus for the week. Tomorrow's data is fairly light. UK GDP, very manufacturing production, backward looking data. US PPI, not really um, moving markets, not being really watch that, watched. And US Michigan consumer sentiment. Be interesting to see if we any central bank speakers later in the week, um, you know, particularly notably from the Fed, um, who are going to maybe mention or there might be talk about the US CPI data that we do get out today. But all eyes really on that CPI data. Just incidentally, so I just wound this back to. Um, actually, no, I haven't. Let me just rewind it back just because yesterday's data. So we did get the Chinese uh, inflation out overnight. Um, and that was uh, be higher than expectations. That's a negative, obviously. Um, uh, markets uh, in here obviously looking for uh, a less aggressive um, inflation numbers, but um, higher from from uh, from China. But if we look at the European data this morning from Germany, um, all in black in here, all bang in line with expectations in here. So um, that those that's probably you know seen as a positive in that they're not higher than expected. Um, so inflation numbers out of Germany. Um, moving to new highs on the year on year basis in here, um, but actually um, in line with expectations. And then today it's all going to be all focus on the CPI data. OK, all the focus is going to be on the CPI data. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, that's coming in just on the one hour. Um, and so then we have um, so 8.30 Eastern. Um, 10.30 Eastern, we also get the crude oil inventory. So if you're trading crude, if you're trading Canadian dollar, uh, watching out for that. Now, I mentioned Fed speakers. We do get Bostic later to stay. Maybe, maybe not going to be referring to the inflation data. it uh, be interesting to see. So um, watching out for that um, later today as well. So that's what we've got on the on the cards. Let's have a look um, at five things to start your day, see what's been going on. Well, inflation, um, we've already spoken about this really. So headline annual number, um, we're looking for it to moderate lower. So um, it was 8.5%, the, the the forecast headline number. Sorry, the 8.5% the 8 in March, looking for it to be at 8.1% for April. So to that's to show that we've reached the peak. OK, um, and that's what you know the market is going to uh, like to see. Um, so um, that's uh, an important thing to, to be watching today, as we've already mentioned. Um, Terry USD and algorithmic stablecoin slumped on Wednesday. Uh, bloody blah, blah. We're not looking at crypto uh, in our world. Um, China, um, a 51% drop in new coronavirus. So this is important. Um, a 51% drop in new uh, coronavirus infections on Tuesday. Uh, zero cases found in the community. And so that's seen as a positive to maybe unlocking the uh, lockdowns that we have uh, in uh, in Shanghai at the moment. And that should also then help in the longer run um, abate uh, um, some of the supply chain issues we have and some of the, the problems um, regarding uh, the lockdowns that we have in China. So that's uh, definitely seen as a positive. Uh, dollar snaps a four-day rally ahead of the U.S. inflation. Um, U.S. stock futures rebounded uh, yesterday. Looks stronger at one point, set back again. Uh, Nasdaq led the way back higher. Um, yields um, going to um, lower yields. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. And that should be and has been helping stocks, particularly tech stocks, to try to rebound in here over the last couple of days and we'll look at those charts in a second um, but obviously it's all going to be about the inflation day today and as we say crude oil inventories as well um, a few articles i'll run through those before we get to the charts so stock bonds rise before key US inflation report maybe some short covering maybe some hope um probably short covering more than anything else um, but 10-year us yields take three day decline to 20 basis points so that's going to be important that's helping the tech stocks remember lower yields yeah um, higher prices, bond prices, lower yields, 
good for tech sector, good for growth stocks. Yeah. Higher interest rates, higher yields, negative for growth stocks and um, global bonds. Gain as traders await U.S. inflation. Two-year trades fall, fall as much as seven base points. That's just today um, to 229, 292. Remember, we were about 3% um, only the end of last week. Uh, consumer price pr uh, pressures expected to ease um, to 8.1%. And we've already mentioned that. Um, and the same stuff going on in here from Reuters. Shares hold up. Yields drop before U.S. inflation data. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Again, you know, it looks like there's some positive here. Again, talking about the covid um, talk about the COVID from China, um, the um, the uh, lockdown in Shanghai, and um, there's a growing number of federal reserve issues pushed back on Tuesday against the possibility of 75. Um, and so, yeah, maybe we're at peak, maybe at peak hawkish, peak inflation, maybe <coughs> the negativity that we're seeing in stock indices is coming to an end. Excuse my coughing here, guys. Still not fully over it at the moment. Um, Oil rises on looming EU Russian oil ban, though. So um, oil has pushed lower as well, and that's probably helped a little bit the the rebound that we're seeing in stocks. Um, oil has been lower more recently, um, but um, uh, you know concerns uh, that you know this uh, EU Russian uh, ban on Russian oil, um, the EU oil, oh, excuse me, the EU ban on Russian oil and gas and potential disruption to gas that we're seeing at the moment because of um the uh the key a tree transit point in ukraine okay um because of that in here putting um question marks um over uh the price of energy um and then that's obviously uh sort of semi-negative for the global market where at the moment well european stocks are up aggressively higher one to two percent in here um mostly with the us futures higher overnight and they're also gaining a little bit from a, a, a solid end to the session, although it's quite erratic, actually, in the U.S. session, the end of the U.S. session. The uh, U.S. session was kind of mixed, though. Dow was down. NASDAQ was up. Uh, sorry, S&P was up. NASDAQ was up, you know, uh, a healthy amount. But if we look this morning, we're up even further this morning. So Dow up nearly, nearly a percent. The S&P up over a percent and nearly one and a half percent on the NASDAQ in here. Um, and it's a good little article in here just saying just because we get hit peak in phase two doesn't mean that's great, a great thing, you know. Um, we hit peak and it just plateaus, that's not great either, you know. Just you know, we don't want to see um inflation peaking at eight around eight, seven, eight, nine percent, depending on which economy you're looking at, and then just not coming back down again. It needs to come down again, right? You know, over you know, a fairly not swiftly, but you know, over time, certainly start to see it moving back lower. So that's an important consideration. I don't know whether I'm, I know it wasn't me misreading this. So I don't know whether it, it just the, the way they were compiling, um, compiling the data in here. But this seems to be much more in line now. So um, we're currently 75 to 100, um, 125 to 150. That's up 50. So next meeting kind of nailed on that we've got 90 percent of a 50 basis point, only a 10 percent chance um, of going um, for 75. And then if we look at the um, July meeting, so we're looking at um, in here, this is 175 to 200. So that's saying it's 100 basis point up. So 250 hikes um, and only a 75, um, sorry, only less than a 10% chance. We're going to get even one 75 basis point hike across the next two meetings, but pretty much nailed on that we're going to get 250s. Okay, so um, that's pretty much in line with the, what you know we would kind of expect and what the Fed is telling us. <clears throat> right, let's look at the charts. I think this is important. Um, I think, you know, since basically um, the beginning of the week, we've gone to higher prices. These are bond prices. Remember, at the end of last week, we went through 3% on yield and we've been going slowly higher in price. You'd argue there's a small bottom in here, um, whether you draw a trend line or not. You know, for me, you know, this trend line through here is not that great. I mean, this one is probably the better trend line that comes across here. And we're pushing above that trend. I'm also above that peak there. See that peak there from last week, last Thursday, back above that swing peak. So you've got, you've got a Dow theory reversal above the lower high here from last Thursday. And also you're breaking this little internal trend line. So I think that's important. If you put a trend line down through here, you're obviously through that trend line as well. So a base in here in bond prices means um, lower bond yields, good for uh, the tech sector. And we've certainly seen the tech sector lead the way back higher. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. So you can see in here uh, for the NASDAQ, the last couple of days, try to rebound, you know, having led the way lower, obviously, um, breaking down through the 
March lows in here through the latter part of April, you know, hesitantly, and then the last week plunging aggressively lower. But then the last two sessions was a decent rebound effort yesterday. Um, but, and it was actually, you know, it was looking quite strong when we were up here, but then gave a lot of that back into the close, but then got it all back in here today. Look, we're back up at yesterday's high already on the NASDAQ. And if you come into like a 15 minute chart, you can see in here you've got this kind of double bottom here. We triggered up through this high here, and we're basically flirting with that high again, really close. And you've got this high here. So for the NASDAQ, these important peaks in here to monitor today you know we're going to obviously do before we open on the cash market we're going to get the data in now only uh what's it 50 minutes so the high there is 12547 and the higher here is 12555 five, five and three quarters so basically above 550 555 in here this looks like a really strong basing pattern yeah uh, definitely like a double bottom i would say you know you'd argue um Maybe a quadruple bottom with this extra low in here. You could use another low in here. You could argue there's four lows in here. So, but up through 12, um, 12, sorry, 12, 555 five, would then signal a far more stronger base and then open up significant upside on the up um, um, going into the day and beyond. Um, and it's a similar story. We're not quite there on the uh, SP. So, S&P in here, you know, it was very erratic yesterday, but look, getting back a lot of what it gave off into the latter part of the session yesterday. It was really strong at one point. Rebounding again and again, if I step in, I'll put it to the same, like, 15-minute time frame. Not quite a double bottom. Yeah, well, it is really double bottoms here, here and here. It's got to be able to way up through this high here, and you've got this other high here. So this high here is um, 40, 65 and a half, and this one here. 40 69 so 65 69 on the upside and there's still a way to go i'd still want to play this from the long side you do have higher highs and higher lows now so see a session of higher highs you broke above this high this morning um so yeah it's looking positive for me it is looking positive so um i want to be playing this one from the long side i think you know now if on the data obviously it just goes straight south then you 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 can be short you know i'm not saying don't react to the data but at the moment pre-data it's telling me be long if we get a bid on the data go with it if it only dips into here and kind of rebounds on the data then maybe don't go straight short on the data okay that's what i'm trying to say you need to see it break down below this low or this low to be bearish you know so even if it dips on the data if it dips and strides to hold you might be a buying opportunity on the data so watching out for that as well okay um, i'm keeping an eye on the bond market yeah, let's keep an eye out over here. See what the bond market's doing. You know, you've got this base going in for the bonds already. So um, let's go take a look at the commods, commodity markets. Let's start off with uh, gold. And just a quick nod to the dollar. You know, the dollar's really been leading the way on the upside in here. And you can see in here, it's faltered. It really has faltered the last, with stocks, you know, getting pounded at the beginning of this week, right? Um and the end of last week, dollar hasn't gone any higher. So dollar's got a lot of positivity priced, oh, sorry, a lot of negativity priced into it, really. Um, and a lot of that, you know, obviously the yields um, going back to uh, lower yields, that's not helped the dollar too much. And dollar down in here today. So this could be a topping pattern on dollar. It takes out that low there. And then this is a little double top pattern on dollar and it looks negative. So uh, dollar trying to tell you, and this is like really led the way. This has led the charge for the risk off theme that we've had um march or april you know the dollar um it's been the standard bearer now let's go take a look at the uh, gold now with dollar uh, with the dollar um up in here um gold has been down you know because uh, that's the kind of the natural relationship you would expect um i'm just going to remove drawing tools in here so gold has been really on the back foot and you know if you look at my reports from overnight you know i'm negative on gold which made a new low yesterday why wouldn't you be negative lower again you're right so lower lows and low highs but you're putting this rebound in so just be a little wary today okay if we get a turn in the bonds we get well get a continued um rally in bonds you get some weakness in the dollar come through gold could easily rally in here um and so you've got this kind of little base going on at the moment if we want to put a trend line on this little base Again, get rid of all the old. If we look on here, just this down move here, you can see we're flirting with that trend line. It's a good trend line, right? So drawn off of here, drawn through this high here. That works well. 
that fails here look goes right up close 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 fails away and now went right up to it earlier on today failed and now flirting with it so if we get a punch higher on the data get a push up towards 1860 1865 in here gets up towards these peaks then this all looks a lot more bullish for gold so just watching out for that one it's bearish at the moment but again this looks like it could be about to turn a lot of these markets singing about to turn let's go look at oil so oil like really choppy in a range obviously very negative the last couple of days turned it around today you got a bullish outside pattern bullish engulfing candlestick in here for um, oil looks very positive you know i can't really say much apart from probably buy it in here you know boom 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 boom, boom. You know, if it takes out that high there um 104.16 then it probably is going to charge again it has come a long way that's the only thing i'll say with oil though it's had a big move already today but it doesn't mean it can't hit 106 today so um probably playing that one from the long side gold tentatively from the long side as well and um, we've already looked at playing it from the long side on the stock indices right guys i'm going to wrap it all up there good to be back uh, i'm going to wish you all a great trading day stay safe and i'll be back with you with another bull versus bear webinar on thursday